Hello and welcome. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Julie and I will be guiding you through a one hour journey and meditation that is inspired by one of the great mythologies of Ganesha, the elephant god. Now, before we begin, I'd like to invite you to get comfortable. So if you have pillows, blankets, or blocks, feel free to bring them into this meditation to have them accessible in case you need them at any point during our journey. You can use the pillows or blankets to pad underneath your knee as I am doing here, or to place underneath your sitting bones. And then also, if you have a set of mala beads, um, these normally would have 108 beads, uh, feel free to also um, bring them for our meditation today as we will be going through a mula mantra meditation. If you don't have mala beads, that's absolutely fine. I will be guiding you and leading you through the meditation and I will let you know when we start to come to the completion of the 108 repetitions. Okay, so our story today takes us to the palace of King Kubera, who is the god of wealth, and one day Kubera uh, approaches Shiva and Parvati, the parents of the elephant god Ganesha, and invites them to his palace in order to uh, celebrate and to have this um, banquet where he is able to sort of um, show off uh, his wealth and his opulence. Shiva and Parvati unfortunately decline his invitation and suggest instead that they will send their son Ganesha to the palace in their place. And Kubera laughs. He says, ha ha ha, I can feed a thousand children like Ganesha. Bring him to my palace. So on the day of the banquet, Ganesha goes to Kubera's palace and he is offered the food and all the drinks. Um, that his heart desires. And uh, Ganesha is known to have a very healthy appetite and he eats and eats one dish after another. And as he finishes one dish and another, they continue to bring him more and more food until there is no longer any food in the palace. So Kubera is desperate to satisfy Ganesha and he sends his army of men into the village to gather more food to feed Ganesha. And they bring the food to the palace and Ganesha continues once again to eat and eat and more and more and then finishes all the food and eventually there is no more food left in the entire village. Right, so Ganesha looks at Kubera and he says, you promised that you would feed me. You promised your parents, my parents, that you would feed me. And Kubera is frightened. He returns to Shiva and Parvati and says, I don't know what to do. I cannot satisfy your son. And Shiva says to Kubera, return to the palace, return with humility, and all you need to do is feed Ganesha one handful of rice with your humility, with your ego stripped. So Kubera returns to the palace. He offers a simple handful of rice to Ganesha with humility. And Ganesha is finally satisfied. So many of these mythologies, um, they really, the characters in the mythologies represent uh, the, the different aspects of ourselves, our shadows, our light, our, um, our darkness, our strengths, our weaknesses. So within the story of Kubera and Ganesha, perhaps you recognize or resonate with that quality of Ganesha that is unable to be satisfied, always wanting more, 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 right? Seeking this sort of external validation. 
Maybe, on the other hand, you resonate with the quality of King Kubera that is constantly um, trying to satisfy, is giving, giving, um, uh, are sort of afraid to, um, to, to take ownership or, or to regain right, your own, or to say that you can't, to say that uh, you don't have any more to give. And in the end, um, another really uh, inspiring lesson also that we can take from this beautiful and simple story is in the sacredness of the small things or the sacredness of the small acts, right? So a lot of times um, we think really big, right? When we think about our offerings to humanity or changing the world, we think that we have to start movements, right? Or do something really visible. Um, but one of the greatest lessons that we can learn from this story is that the, the largest impact that we can have, not just on ourselves, but also on the world and humanity is to, uh, or is through the smallest acts um, that we make in our day-to-day -day, or the smallest offerings that we make in our day-to-day -day life. So we don't have to go out and create something huge, right? We don't have to go out and make something really big that everyone sort of looks at and goes, wow, look at what this person's doing. And the small, sometimes invisible acts in our day-to-day, -day, the kindness that we offer to ourselves that is often unseen, the kindness that we may offer to someone else that is often unseen, right? These are um, the large sacred acts really that make the largest impact in the world. So today our meditation will um, bring a little bit more awareness and attention into some of these smaller things, right? The, the simplicity and how these small, um, often overlooked aspects of our lives, of our day-to-day, -day, of our being, are actually um, the largest, most powerful, most potential offerings that we can make to ourselves and to the world around us. Let's start with a few uh, very simple movements to get the body a little bit more prepared for sitting for a longer period of time. And remember that at any point during the practice, if you need to um, readjust your position, if you need to grab some of those props that you have accessible to you, feel free to do that. And you just wanna come into a state of um, being as physically comfortable as you can during this journey. So we'll start by taking the arms by the sides and as we inhale, float the arms up. We can interlace the fingers and spin the palms upwards. Right? Lengthen the palms up towards the sky as you make a little bit more space in that area between your neck and your shoulders. And then as you exhale now, turn the backs of your hands forwards round the spine in the opposite direction from the hands. Maintaining parallel arms here and breathing a little bit more space in that area between your shoulder blades. And then take a few more inhalations and exhalations as we move through this. The inhalation raises the arms and the exhalation rounds. Okay, take three more here to the rhythm of your own breath. Okay, on your next inhalation, raise the arms once again. And this time, separate the palms, bring a space between the palms. On the next exhalation, take a twist over to your right side. So your left hand gently resting on the opposite leg, right hand gently grazing the floor behind you. 
take a look over your right shoulder. So it's important here again to continue to use the breath to allow us to make a little bit more space. So if you feel yourself muscling with your arms, see if you can do a little bit less with your arms and a little bit more with the breath. Right? So as we inhale, the uh, spine lengthens. As we exhale, the exhalation draws us into a slightly deeper expression. On the next inhalation, come back to center, float the arms once again. And exhale, let's take a twist over to the left side. All right, so once again, check in with that um, sort of quality of striving and see if you can move a little bit more into a sense of effortlessness, right? Just allowing yourself to be as you are, allowing the breath to guide you where it naturally wants to take you rather than forcing. Okay, and then take it back to center, float the arms up once again. And as we exhale, slowly release the arms. And we're just gonna take a little bit of movement in the hips once again. So you can remove the pillow if you have one underneath your knee. Take the hands to the floor behind you. You can take your feet out a little bit wider than your hips and just gently begin to rock the knees from side to side. Maybe the inhalation to center, the exhalation to the side. Again, inhalation back to center, exhalation to the side. Let's take one more on each side. Inhale, back to center. <sighs> Exhale, and one more. Inhale, back to center, and exhale. All right, returning to center, coming back into your seated position, and we will begin our meditation today. So take those pillows, blocks, blankets, whatever it is you need, and get comfortable. And today we'll be using um, Abhaya Mudra. So it is um, represented by this bowl-like shape. We've got the right hand on top of left. We join the two thumbs together, creating this sort of circular shape with the fingers. And this represents the space of the void, right, the emptiness. And as we take this mudra, we're simply connecting to the quality of uh, the allowance of whatever it is that is asking to be noticed to rise to the surface of our awareness. And that's just a reminder that we're not really trying to um, force a particular experience. Instead, we're coming into this trust and wisdom of the body and trusting that this body will release or will reveal to us whatever it is um, that is asking to be noticed, whether that is a memory, whether that is an insight, and just allowing the journey to unfold as it naturally will to us individually. So each person's journey is going to be slightly different. All right, so as you take your hands into the mudra, you can uh, gently allow the arms to rest on your lap. Allow the eyes to close. And take a few deep breaths in and out. So we would like these breaths to be as full but as relaxed as it can possibly be. So it's unforced. The body is relaxed. The belly is relaxed. And we begin to fill into the spaces of the body. And then from here, begin to bring your awareness to your eyeballs. And bring your awareness to, again, the sacredness of your eyes, the eyes that allow you to see both externally and internally. And allow yourself to rest into the sacredness right, of the eyes, but then also beginning to expand the awareness into the vastness of the space behind the eyes around the eyes. And 
and eventually expanding awareness more into the space, the space within your head, the space around your head. Maybe beginning to even sense and feel right into the limitlessness of this space. And from here, we'll begin to bring the awareness into the area of the throat. And again, bring your awareness into the throat center and connecting into the sacredness of this throat, our voice, our speech representing both the external speech and the internal speech, representing the shadows of what we say, representing the strengths and the inspiration, allowing yourself to rest in that luminous light of the throat but then slowly also beginning to expand your awareness into the space around your throat, the vastness of the space around your neck, and the limitlessness of that space. slowly beginning to shift your awareness into the heart center and allowing your awareness to rest in the sacredness of this heart center, the place of our wisdom, of our intuition, of our connection to the divine consciousness, of our emotions, of our, of our heart, of our creation and our creativity. of our connection and our disconnection. And then again, allowing the awareness to expand into the vast space around the heart and the vast space within the chest. And slowly taking the awareness into the center of the belly. Allowing the awareness to rest in that belly space, perhaps noticing some of the movement of your breath into this belly as you continue to relax into this belly. Feeling it expand and contract as we experience breath all the way down into this space. And then again, bringing awareness into the vastness of space within this belly. The vastness of space around the organs. Taking your awareness into the bones of your body, from the skull to the spine, into the rib cage, and the arms and the leg bones. And feeling and sensing into the sacredness of this structure that holds us together, the sacredness of the structure that creates our unique form, that allows us to experience the world in the way that we do, that is stacked in this incredible way to work with gravitational force on the earth. And 
And when you're ready again, beginning to allow your awareness to rest into the space that surrounds the bones. The vastness of space around the bones, between the bones and the skin. then maybe even to the limitlessness of this space. And sensing and feeling into the whole of this body, the whole structure of this being, the sacredness of your physical form And then moving beyond this physical form as you take awareness into the vastness of space around the whole of your body. Beginning to feel and sense again into the limitlessness of the space around you, of the void the energy that fills the spaces of the void, of the information that is carried through the spaces of the void. And slowly and slowly expanding even further out to experience the space that whole space. So there is a sense of being aware of the formlessness of this form that we reside in, the formlessness of the vessel of this body. And allowing ourselves to rest into this space, into this formlessness for a few more breath cycles. Once again, taking inspiration from the qualities of Ganesha, the remover of obstacles that allows us to see what is asking to be seen, to hear what is asking to be heard, to feel and to experience what is asking to be felt, and to know what is asking to be known. We infuse the space of this void where we infuse this space with the sound of gong, which sounds like G-A-N-G, -G. sounding gong five times on the exhalation. And you can join me as we move through this very powerful energetic expression through our voices. Let's take a long, deep breath in together for the first gong. 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 Final one. Gone. 
just allowing the vibration of the sound of gong to infuse the space. And from here, you are welcome to keep the mudra within your hands or to allow the hands to gently rest on your knees, either with the palms facing down or the palms facing upwards. And begin to bring awareness once again into the sound and into the rhythm of your natural, uncontrolled rhythmic breathing. watching the sacredness of each inhalation and each exhalation as it moves into and out of this body, filling and emptying. Maybe you feel or perceive this breath as light moving up and down the central channel Each inhalation, drawing this light down to the bottom, to the base of your pelvic floor. And each exhalation, drawing this light up the central channel, through the crown of your head and directly above. Right, recognizing that this breath is happening continuously every single moment of the day but we are often not aware of it. Right? So recognizing again the sacredness of this breath as it draws nourishment in from the surrounding environment. And as we exhale, returning right, what we create and transform internally back into the space around us. And in this way, it's this continuous sacred exchange between the environment around us and the internal environment that exists within the space of our body. Now this time, we'll take a moment to bring awareness into that brief pause between each inhalation and each exhalation. So now, after your next inhalation, take a momentary pause, two seconds. And then exhale, allow the light to rise once again upwards above the crown of the head and take a momentary pause at the end of that exhalation. Again, a momentary pause at the end of the inhalation. And a momentary pause at the end of each exhalation. And allowing yourself to continue in this way. So again, perceiving, feeling, visualizing the light of your breath rising upwards and downwards with each inhalation and with each exhalation.
after your next exhalation, you can return to your natural breath if you haven't already done so. Bring your awareness into that natural and continuous movement between inhalations and exhalations. You can continue to keep the eyes closed or if you have your mala beads, you can um, grab them now as we will now move into the final stage of our meditation, which is the recitation of the Ganapati Mula Mantra. Um, so mantra is uh, one of the most powerful ways in which our voices express themselves or itself, right? If you think about how we tend to use the voice in our day to day, sometimes without awareness, maybe creating conflict, right? A lot of times our voices are used to dominate, right? Sometimes our voices are silenced. Right? The being afraid to speak, being told our whole lives perhaps that um, we must stay quiet, right? So mantra is um, the sacred vibration of the voice that allows us to connect, to resonate and to vibrate into the frequency of the natural environments around us and also into um, what we call the unified field or the divine consciousness, right? Um, in the Shiva Sutras, Sutra 2.1 says, mind is mantra, right? So this is the idea of um, when we recite the mantras that we are um, taking the, the mind and sort of, or the brain waves also in a way you can say, and connecting them into that frequency of the mantra. Um, so another thing that I'd like to add that's really important is in terms of um, healing and coming to the natural vibrations of our own bodies, our voices carry the most powerful potential of self-healing. So a lot of times um, we tend to sort of uh, seek out maybe the sound baths or uh, other sound uh, journeys, other sound healing journeys, um, which are amazing, but not to forget that the most powerful tool that we have available to us is our voices. In fact, um, there were studies that have been conducted that show our bodies respond most to the sound of our natural voice, so our voice, we have it within ourselves. Everything we need is within these bodies. And then um, for the Ganapati Mula Mantra, right? It is Om Gang Ganapataye Namaha. Um, representing, I think, maybe one of my most um, uh, favorite or powerful um, resonance with this mantra is this idea that our, our minds have the ability to create all that it does. So it is uh, our minds that create our fears, our anxieties, our worries, our anger. Um, and it is our minds also that has the power to overcome and recreate and transform this into um, love and positivity and compassion, right? So when we recite the Ganapati Mula Mantra, we're taking this mind into um, the mantra and coming into this ability of ourselves to transmute or to transform into its highest expression that serves us and that serves all of humanity, right? So once again, 108 repetitions that allows us to really feed our experience into the vibrations of the mantra. So um, you can grab a hold of your mantra and once again, it is Om Gang Ganapataye Namaha and you can um, 
join in once you are comfortable to do so. Om Gang Ganapataye Namaha 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 
ओम गांग गणपताये नमः 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 ओम गांग 
गणपताये नमः ओम गां 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 गणपताये नमः फाइनल थ्री ओम गां गणपताये नमः ओम गां गणपताये नमः लास्ट रेपिटेशन ओम गां गणपताये नमः Stay for a moment to allow the vibration of the Ganapati Mula Mantra to vibrate through your body, allowing yourself to be here, to receive, to come into greater connection and awareness. Tapping into and vibrating with the unified field of divine consciousness. Begin to invite a long, deep inhalation into the body, and a long, deep exhalation to begin to bring awareness once again into the physical body, into the space around you. As you slowly bring movement into your fingers and your hands and your arms. Gently draw the palms together into the center of the heart as an offering in Anjali Mudra. And we will end our practice by sounding the sound of Om three times, the primordial sound of the universe, as an offering from ourselves into the space around us one more time. Take a deep breath in for Om. Ah.
are ready to, you can gently allow the eyes to open and to rest your hands once again into your lap or onto your knees. Welcome back. Ah, so whatever has come into your awareness through this journey, whatever you have experienced, if you are looking for further support, please feel free to reach out to me. A lot of times um, I get the question of, you know, sometimes people see um, visuals, light patterns. Um, sometimes you get these sort of energetic feelings. So whatever it is, um, uh, a lot of times I'm being asked, like, what does it mean, right? And the simplest way to um, really explain that is that it just simply means that you have tapped into this unified field. You have tapped into the divine consciousness. And where do you go from here, right? From here, this is where we really start to connect into the power that lies within us. So hopefully that gives you a sense of confidence, right? That whatever um, the, the potential that we have within these bodies can allow us to make the changes that we really um, desire for ourselves and for humanity. And a really big part of classical Tantra is both within the transcendent and the immanent domain. So that means that once you have received transcendent knowledge, once you have um, recognized that you have the capability to tap into this greater divine consciousness or this divine power um, that you are already and have always been a part of, that we can take that now to really shine the light of our humanity into uh, the world, into our communities, into our relationships, and really make those powerful, dynamic changes that we are looking for on a larger scale. So hopefully that brings a little bit of inspiration from this meditation into your day today. Again, my name is Julie. Thank you for joining me today. And um, I'll be dropping more meditations um, for you in the near future. Thank you very much. So much gratitude.